Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have an exciting new video. If you couldn't tell by my cute little face and my cottage core outfit, I tried to do a cottage core outfit. We are doing a look using the new ColourPop and Tinkerbell collection. I am so, so excited. But before we jump into that, I just wanted to say a huge thank you. I hit 200 subscribers last night, which doesn't seem like a lot, but I didn't intend for anyone to really watch my videos when I started posting them. So it means a lot that 200 people have been kind enough to support me on my journey. I am a huge fan of ColourPop and Disney. And of course the two combined meant this. I am so, so excited to share my thoughts on this. And if you're interested in seeing how I created this cute little green look on my eyes today, then keep on watching. Alrighty friends, let's go ahead and just jump into a quick overview of the products that are in the collection. So I did just look this up on ColourPop's website to get all the pricings and it was not on there. I'm not sure if it's because things are out of stock and they're going to be restocking, but it is still available on Ulta's website. So all the links in the description that I'll put will be from the Ulta site, but ColourPop usually does restock their collection. So if you're still interested in getting anything, just keep an eye on the website. The first piece in the collection is the Sprinkle A Little Magic palette, and this is a nine pan eyeshadow palette. The cover of the palette is the same as the packaging and you open it up and you have this gorgeous greenish neutral color story. And then on the mirror, you also have Tinkerbell. I would show you, but I don't wanna show you the mess on my desk. But this color story is absolutely gorgeous. I am so, so excited to play around with these tones. I think it'll be so much fun. And this palette is a bit bigger than the normal nine pan palette. So for reference, here is my Frozen 2 Elsa palette. And as you can see, they're a bit different in size. So the Tinkerbell palette is a little bit bigger than their normal nine pan palettes. For reference, here's my Lemoncello palette and it's about the same size as that one. So the pans are those bigger pans. I think ColourPop as a whole is just moving into these bigger panned palettes. I'm not mad about it. I think it's more product, so I'm not too worried, um, but just something to be aware of in case you collect a lot of ColourPop items. So the palette retails for 16 US dollars. The next item in the collection are two glossy lip stains. I actually really like the formula of these. I just tried them for the first time the other day. So the two shades in this collection are uh, Tinkerbell and Clap If You Believe, and they are super, super cute. They have little Tinkerbells on the front, and then the top is green to match the Tinkerbell theme. And these retail for $9 a piece. The third item in the Tinkerbell collection is the Super Shock Trio. These are the three Super Shock shadows. There's a green, a red, and then kind of like a rose gold. Also, look how cute this packaging is. It has Peter Pan. The first tattoo I ever got was Peter Pan. I have the Neverland stars on my shoulder. Um, but these are super, super pretty. I'm really excited for these shades. And for the trio, I don't know what they are individually, but for the trio, it's 20 US dollars. There are two cream gel eyeliner pencils in the shade Lost Girl and Fly With Me. Fly With Me is more of like an emerald green and Lost Girl is kind of like a bronze. These retail for $8 each as well. And last but not least, there's three Super Shock Cheek Blushes. These are retailing for $9 a piece and they are in the shades Darling, which is kind of like this deep rose. Uh, Happy Thoughts, which is more of kind of like a rose gold. And Magic Moon, which is more of like your bright peachy red. All in all, I'm super excited. Tinkerbell is right up my alley. And if you've seen any of my videos by now, you know I'm a ColourPop ho. So I always have to get the ColourPop Disney things. People are always like, I don't know why people collect things just because it's Disney. And then there's people like me. So I think we're gonna do a look. I think we're gonna start with the look. I'm gonna do some eyeshadow. I did my base. I used the ColourPop, uh, the tinted moisturizer, the HelloFresh tinted moisturizer. Um, and then I also used a little bit of my Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer and my MAC Brow Pencil in Spiked. That's pretty much my go-to base right now. For eye primer, I'm gonna use my Fenty Pro Filter Eye Primer. This is my all-time favorite eye primer and the one I think works the best. So I like to use it as kind of a standard in all of my tutorials. I also wore this little hair scarf today because it's yellow and it has kind of like green flowers on it. So I thought it would kind of match the, the green almost maybe. It wouldn't be a review without the mirror sticker. So I don't know what I want to do for my look. I know I want to use some of the super shocks. So I think I want to use the green super shock, which is in straight on till morning. So I'm going to pull that one aside and then we're going to kind of base our look off of green. So starting out, the first shade I'm going to go into is sleep, which is this matte green. And I'm going to take that on a Morphe R34, which is just a big blending brush. 
And I'm just gonna start by packing that all over my crease, kind of in the transition crease area, just to give it a nice green base. I know that if I don't put green down first, then I'm not gonna wanna use <laughs> all the green shades. So I'm finding this first green shade is having a little bit of a hard time blending. I know a lot of times really bright colors have a hard time blending. Um, and then also with this particular primer, it's very, very tacky. And I've noticed recently that a lot of my brighter shades are having a hard time blending on it. I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna definitely try it with like my P. Louise uh, base and everything too later, um, but just if you are not into blending eyeshadow, just be aware of that. It's looking a lot more patchy on camera than it is in person. On camera, it's picking up pretty patchy. In my mirror, it has a couple patchy spots, but it's not as noticeable as it is in camera. And it could also be the brush I'm using too. I don't normally use this type of brush with these types of colors. I just have not washed brushes in a very long time. Next, I'm taking a Morphe M456, which is kind of more of a detailed blending brush. And I'm going into this deep matte green, which is called Awake. And I'm going to be putting that in the crease. I think this will be a really, really pretty shade with the green that we laid down first. So this one is also, I think you can kind of see, having a little bit of trouble blending. As of right now, this is of course my only time using this palette is right now. And I definitely want to try it out with different circumstances, different primers, different tools. Um, but as of right now, I'm not super impressed with the formula. I just feel like I have other shadows bright greens and green shadows in my collection that work a lot better. I do like it for the novelty factor that it is Tinkerbell and for that I don't regret picking it up but this isn't one that I'm immediately using and thinking oh my gosh I have to use this a million times. It's just pulling very patchy and not blending super easily. I think the last time I had a palette that did this was my Naked, uh, not Naked Cherry, the Marc Jacobs Terrific palette. That one I also had a lot of issues with and it's very reminiscent of that, kind of how these mattes are blending. And it's not necessarily an awful formula. It could still work just with more work. I'm just not in the market for wanting to spend forever on my eyeshadow. Normally I'm very much, I allot myself like 10 minutes to do an eye look before I leave the house. I do like the shades individually and I do wish that they blended a little bit nicer, but this is just kind of what we're working with right now. I'm going back in with that first green shade sleep and I'm just kind of blending that over uh, the dark green shade just in an effort to blend it closer together. And I feel like that helps a lot. I feel like it helps it look less patchy. And too, once we put the shimmers down, I think it'll look fine. I'm just not super, super impressed. If we're just being honest, and I'm here for just brutal honesty with these makeup reviews. So this is where we're looking with the two shades. This is just that light green matte and then the dark green matte. I do wanna go in and try some of the shimmers and see if we can save this look a little bit. So I think I wanna go in with Tink, which is this uh, lighter green. And then I think next I wanna go into Neverland, which is this a little bit darker shimmer green. I talked about my color switch in my last Ulta haul video. I'll link that down below, but I am obsessed with this, especially for shimmers because I feel like it's so easy to go through brushes when you're doing tons of different shimmers. This has been a lifesaver, I'm obsessed. I'm spritzing with a little bit of setting spray. Today I'm using my NYX Matte Finish. Normally I use my Fix Plus spray, but I do not have that in arm's reach right now. And the first shade I said we were going into was Tink, which is this kind of lime shimmer. And I'm starting in the inner portion of my eyelid and packing that on up towards the crease. I'm gonna be taking that about halfway through my eyelid and then we'll do the darker shimmer on the outer half. Using the same brush, I'm gonna go into Neverland, which is the darker green shimmer. And I'm going to start packing that on the outer part of my lid. If you see me looking over to the side, it's because I have my mirror set up there because I'm actually blind. So I need my mirror right in front of me. <laughs> That seems to be helping a lot using the darker shimmer. I feel like it's blending those colors nicer together and it's making the deep matte not as noticeable in terms of like its patchiness. Next, going back into my Morphe M456, I'm just going to, without taking any more product, blend those shimmers into the crease just with whatever's left over on my brush to give it more of a seamless finish. So this is what we're looking at right now. I'm not 
super opposed to it. I don't hate it, but I do think I have other greens in my collection that give me a nicer, smoother result. Not mad at it though. Not a complete loss. I think it's still pretty cute. For the lower lash line, I'm really intrigued by this gold shade. So I think I want to take some of these mattes and then buff that on my lower lash line and maybe top it with the gold just for something a little bit different. The first brush I'm taking, this is the Morphe and Jeffree Star JS11 brush. I don't think they make these anymore, but it's just kind of like a flat shadow brush. And I'm first going into Second Star, which is this light brown matte. I'm tapping that on and then I'm buffing that underneath my lash line. And this one won't be super noticeable because it is so close to my skin tone. I just want to get a shadow down there. And using the same brush, I'm now going to go into this is Big Magic, which is the slightly deeper matte. I do feel like both the light brown matte shades are very similar and I feel like they could have included a different matte shade. I'm just taking a brush. This is from the Wet n Wild Pac-Man collection. No product, just buffing those two shades together, making sure that it's nice and seamless. And then hopping back into that JS11 brush, we're gonna go ahead and try this gold shade, which is called Small Fairy. This one's more of like a chunky glitter type formula, so I'm not sure how it's gonna work on the lower lash line, but I feel like it would be fun to try. So I'm just very gently taking that on the tip of my brush and then lining my lower lash line. It's a bit more than I intended, but we can always go back in and blend. Now going back into the Wet n Wild Pac-Man brush, I'm just blending that nice and smooth. I feel like I like the little bit of sparkle underneath, just something a little pop, you know, nothing too crazy, just a little pop of something, so it's a little bit different. I wear glasses, so I never like to do a super smoked out lower lash line or a super bold one because with my glasses, it just makes me look like I have raccoon eyes. I do want to try the Super Shock shadow. So this is the green one in the shade Straight On Till Morning. I'm just going to take that on a finger just a little bit, and I'm going to pat that into the middle of my lid. That's beautiful. Look at that. Ooh! The same on this side. I feel like that's the perfect amount of reflect. I love that. Next, I'm going to take the little pencil side of my Urban Decay Ultraviolet uh, blending brush, um, and I'm going to dip into Pixie Dust, which is this middle lime green shade, and I'm going to use that as an inner corner highlight. I'm going to take a little bit of my MAC Brush Stroke Eyeliner in the shade Brush Black, and I'm going to throw on a quick wing. Okay, I know the winged eyeliner is not the best, but we're going to roll with it because I'm tired of trying to fix it. So, anyway, we finished the eye look, I think. I think we used a good amount of shades out of the palette, but it's time to try some of the other items. I am interested in the Super Shock highlighters, or what are these? The Super Shock blushes, sorry. I think out of all the shades, the one I want to try the most is this kind of deeper rose color, which is in the shade Darling. Look how cute the little packaging is. It has a little Tinkerbell on it, and on the outside it says Darling, which is the shade name, and then it has like little glitters, super cute, and then the back has, of course, like the green Tinkerbell sticker. So I'm going to just take this on a BH Cosmetics. This is the number three from the Aurora Lights uh, blush brush. Aurora Lights collection, um, and I'm just going to pop that on my cheeks. That is super pigmented. That was not what I was expecting. This looks a lot more orange on my face than it did in the pan. So we're going to try and save this look a little bit. <laughs> I really like this shade. I definitely have to go in and blend it a lot better, but I am liking this shade so far. It's something different in my collection. Not one I would normally reach for, but I think this will be a fun fall shade. If all else fails, you just blend things with your foundation brush. Today is just not my day. This is not my best makeup look, but it's fine. It's fine. We're trying new things. I actually really like this shade, though. I think it's really pretty, and it'll be really fun for fall. Okay, what else? Oh, eyeliners. I didn't try the eyeliners yet. So I think I want to actually go into the bronze one, which is the shade Lost Girl. So I'm going to just do that in my waterline really quick. 
Okay, so I did a little bit of the glittery bronze eyeliner in my waterline. I think it's kind of cute. It's not really noticeable. Uh, it blends in with the gold that I did on the lower lash line though. So I do like that. And now we're down. We've tried the eyeliners. We've tried the super shocks. We've tried the palette. So now we are down to lips. And I did actually just try one of these yesterday. I tried this one. Um, which is clap if you believe and I really really liked it so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one again all right this is the final look what do we think something cute and green I really like it actually I don't think it was my best blending job but I think it's a cute look all right let's go ahead and talk about some of my final thoughts on these products so the first one that we tried was the palette I really liked the color story of this. I think the color story is really fun and unique and I really like these greens and golds together. I think what they could have done different is these two top mattes are very, very similar and I think it would have been really cute to see like a mustard yellow. The one I'm thinking of is kind of this one from the Lemon Cello palette. I feel like had they put a yellow in instead of one of the top mattes, I think this would be just a beautiful, beautiful palette. I love the color story though. I think it's a lot of fun. I really like green eyeshadow on myself so I, was a huge fan. Overall, the quality, I only tried about half the shades in this palette. I tried the top mattes, this middle row, and then I tried the two mattes on the bottom. I wasn't super impressed. It was not my favorite from ColourPop, and honestly, I feel like some of these were pretty patchy. It could also be the primer that I used. I do want to try it with some other primers and see if I can get some different results, um, but I wasn't super impressed with the quality. Theming wise though, I think they did great. I Like I said, I would have liked to see like a yellow or something, but I think they were very on theme and all the shades in here made sense for the collection. Overall, I think I would rate this like a three and a half out of 10 stars. I wouldn't find it something that I would absolutely need in my collection if I didn't like to collect ColourPop and Disney collabs. Um, I didn't love the quality, but the color story is really fun and I do think the packaging is really pretty. Another thing to note is there is glitter on all of the packaging. And so as I've been sitting here filming, I've acquired quite the glitter pile in my lap so if you're against glitter probably not your thing. The Super Shock Trio I only tried the green one today I still have two more to try but I am a huge fan of the Super Shocks in general they're some of my favorite eyeshadow formula so I'm gonna go ahead and just give these a five out of five stars. I think the packaging is super cute you got the little shade names with the glitter around them and then the little Tinkerbell on the front, which is cute. But I really like the shade I tried, the green one, um, and I am excited to try these two as well. The Super Shock Cheek products, I thought these were pretty good. I love the shade that I used today, actually. I'm actually really liking this shade. So I am gonna go ahead and give these a five out of five stars as well. I, again, love the Super Shock formulas, both cheek and eyeshadow. So of course I'm gonna like these. I already like the formula. I'm not a super huge fan of this kind of rose gold color, but the other two shades I think are great and I'm excited for fall blush. The two eyeliner pens, I'm gonna go ahead and give these a four out of five stars. I like the shade selection. I like that they're both on theme for the collection. I like the brown. I'm always a sucker for a brown eyeliner, um, but I will take one star off because it was a little bit more sheer, kind of more of a clear base than a brown base. I haven't tried the green one yet, but the brown one, it was pretty, but I feel like it's nothing special. I feel like they've done brown eyeliners a million times over. So four out of five stars for the eyeliners. And last but not least, we have the glossy lip stains. I actually really like these. I wore this shade that I'm wearing today all day yesterday. Um, I didn't touch my lipstick up once and I went out to eat. I ran errands. I was wearing my mask. I was taking my mask off. And by the end of the day, I still had a lip tint to my lips. It wasn't glossy anymore. Um, and it's not super, super glossy. It's just kind of that creamy texture. But I was a huge fan of these. And I think this is a great formula, especially right now because of COVID and we're all wearing masks again. I feel like it's a good formula to have in your collection if you are a lipstick person. So I am pleasantly surprised with these. I'm gonna go ahead and give these a four out of five stars because I haven't tried the other one and it's still a newer formula to my collection, but I did really like using this one yesterday and I'm excited to see how it works today. That is all for today's video, friends. If you did enjoy this one, give it a thumbs up so I know that you liked it. Let me know what other ColourPop collections you'd like to see. And like I said in the beginning, I will link all of this uh, Tinkerbell collection on the Ulta site in the description box below if you're interested in picking anything up for yourself. Hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye friends!